Hello, denizens of the internet. Welcome to my monthly Hackintosh Beat, mon. I said monthly because I really do try to make these episodes coincide with the monthly Open Core updates. As of this taping, we're at 073, and hot on the heels of the OC update came Apple's 11.6 Big Sur update, which also included a nice little surprise for Safari users. The new, uh, I'm assuming, update that we saw previewed as part of Monterey OS. Is this the last Big Sur update before Monterey? Who knows? I really do like the new simplified browser interface and the addition of tab groups, which both Microsoft Edge and Chrome already had. Chrome's is more integrated, but uh, you know it becomes less useful with lots of groups. Apple's implementation is uh, you know kind of less snazzy but more usable. So far, the performance with multiple groupings is is okay. Multiple groups is okay on my M1 portable, but wow, it's kind of shitty on my Intel Hackintosh. Haven't tried it on my Ryzen Tosh yet. Uh, maybe it's the way Apple is going to kill off its remaining Intel uh, users' experiences by making Safari work really crappy on them. Updated to OpenCore 073 using Hack and Drum once again worked just fine. If you have a Thunderbolt-enabled motherboard, then uh, you should check out Hack and Drum to see if yours is supported. The update to Big Sur 11.6 presented. No issues. Considering the teething pains at the beginning of Big Sur, things, uh, touch wood, have sorted themselves out on in, in Hackintosh land. Well, at least for me, which really is the only important thing, right? For all of us OC Gen X fans, and I, I'm a big one, uh, because the developer is changing jobs and moving at the same time, we are still stuck on OpenCore 071, but you know that, that works with everything so far, as the last two OC updates have only had minor, minor changes. And he has promised to update it when he gets a chance. The main fix for version 073 is that Linux users are better supported. To quote the September Dortania website, with OpenCore 073, we present a preview version of the OpenLinuxBoot.efi driver, which delivers first-class Linux support for OpenCore without any chain loading required like Grub. If you're not using Linux, then don't worry. The next round of MMAX will really be the harbinger whether anyone who builds Hackintoshes for their own business purposes will even bother. One factor will be performance, and the other will be price. Building a hack at one point was always the best performance and value option, but that's no longer the case with the introduction of the M1 Mac Mini, coupled with the skyrocketing price of graphics cards. GPU pricing has calmed down a bit, and there is actual availability. Presently, RX 6800 XTs are going for about $1,600, and 6900 XTs are $2,000. And RX 5700 XTs are, well, they're, they're not much of a bargain. When I built my first Hackintosh five years ago, my main reason was that Apple was not building the computer I wanted, independent of price, which included lots of uh, internal storage and a CD DVD burner. <laughs> How quaint. The bonus was it cost less and had better performance, a dedicated big ass GPU, and more importantly, it didn't thermal throttle. That was always something that stuck in my craw about Apple's crippled engineering decisions. That part, at least, seems to have been solved by the new Apple Silicon Max. So, we know the new M1Xs, or whatever they're going to be called, are going to be announced soon. What would it take for me to retire my main rig? 
Using PC Parts Picker, I built a top-of-the-line Hackintosh experience based on both an Intel i9-11900K and a Ryzen 9 5900X uh, with an RX 5900XT GPU. The whole thing came to about $3,300 for, for both configs. I think $3,300 is a good target price to see what Apple comes up with for their M upgrade. A thousand dollars, 16 gig M1 Mac Mini is almost the equal in performance to my i7-10700 with Radeon 7 GPU, which I built for about two thousand dollars. But admittedly, that was back when the Radeon 7 was available for the laughably low price of seven hundred dollars. But if Apple comes out with an M1X Mac for two thousand dollars, let's say that is the equivalent or better than the above parts picker Hackintosh, then there really isn't any requirement to build one unless you still have the parts kicking around or you really can't stand being stuck using only external storage. And finally, the most important Hackintosh update in our household, my wife's. If your life partner has the ability to crash Mac OS in ways that a Russian hacker could never think of, even with the aid of a supercomputer, then you really have to be careful with your updates. What is also significant is that she is using my very first Hackintosh that I built with an i7-4790K. Its Apple model equivalent is a 27-inch iMac mid-2015, and Big Sur is the last OS go-round for it. I have a lot of great memories of that box. However, I don't want to relive my early Clover thrashing. It, it still gives me nightmares. Now, Apple, in its infinite wisdom, made sure that you had to be on Catalina, at the very least, for all your iOS calendar and, and iMessage syncing. But screw Catalina. We went from Mojave all the way to Big Sur in one gulp, and it upgraded without a hitch. Well, there was one hitch. All her stickies were gone. She kept her life's work on stickies, hundreds of them, and they were gone. Divorce papers appeared from nowhere, but with the aid of regular time machine backups, I was able to swap out the empty stickies database for the backed up one, and every one of those puke-colored squares popped back on the screen. Whew. <laughs> Disaster averted. Now, I await the new M something or other Max. Have any of you already up, uh, abandoned your Hackintosh uh, for an M1 Mac? Are you interested in the new M's? Tell us in the comments below. Thank you for watching, Denizens. So long. Be seeing you.